This is a one-in-a-lifetime opportunity to buy one of the big four maisons of Cognac. I mean, this really comes around only every 50 to 60 years. It's a perfect fit with our strategy because we've always said we want to buy aged premium brown spirits with a skew to the U.S. and to Asia. And uh, it, it, again, it is right out of our playbook, and this comes back to your question, is that we're, we're pretty good at buying brands uh, which have super latent brand equity, history, heritage, great liquids, but have been deprioritized and not really worked the right way by, by their previous owners. So we've shown time and time again that we're able to turn around those brands and get them growing again and premiumize them. Now, if you remember, you know, it's, it's very similar to when we bought Wild Turkey. At that moment in time, in 2009, Bourbon was really an unexciting place to be, but we really believed in its long-term um, you know, opportunities, and we bought a brand which was dusty, we turned it around, premiumized it, sexy, and it is, bourbon is now one, our second uh, largest leg and doing extremely well, and it's one of the hottest categories in the market. So we see a lot of parallels. And last but not mm -hmm. least, uh, you know, this is the right moment in the cognac cycle to make such an acquisition. I mean, it's much better than buying when you're at the peak or when the markets are frothy. So, but you think you got a good price for it? We think we got a pretty fair price for it, yes. And Bob, just talk to me you a little bit about how long time you need to bear in mind the scarcity. <laughs> talk to me a little bit about how long a time you think it takes to move consumers to premium offerings. So do you also have to age or, you know, how, lo how much longer does a maturing liquor need to be laid down to get that premium price? Or is it ab about marketing well, and selling it differently? You know, the, the great news is that we're acquiring a fantastic inventory, which is very well balanced across the different types of liquids and age profile. So there's a zero limitations from that standpoint. It's going to be much more of a marketing and a sales exercise, and this is our bread and butter. Um, Bob, talk to me a little bit about you know the, the secret sauce of actually again premiumizing brands. I know it's collaborations. I know it's kind of also the cool effect. Is is it harder now than it was in the past, or is it just the same pattern? Then you can repeat. You're also leaving in a couple of months. So, what kind of advice do you give to yeah. to the person that takes over? Well, you know, in brown spirits, the, uh, the the secret is actually lies in innovation, and that's what we did with Wild Turkey. We really innovated up uh, and stretched the brand when we bought it. It was uh, starting, it was actually ending at 19.99, and now we're at 450 dollars. So, uh, if you have the liquid in, in Wild Turkey, it took a little bit longer because there wasn't much of an aged inventory. Here we have it, so we can act uh, very, very quickly. Um, but at, at the end of the day, what really counts also is having authentic brands, brands with history. I mean, this is one of the most mm -hmm. awarded brands in, in, in the category. It's actually the most awarded one. Um, and it is widely recognized for fantastic liquids. Now what we got to do is get liquid to lips and, and make the consumer dream about the brand again.